Welcome to NASDAQ Trade Talks. I'm Jill Malandrino, Global Markets Reporter at NASDAQ. Joining us for this segment, we have Raghu Yarlagata, CEO of Falcon X, a digital assets and cryptocurrency platform for institutional investors, which recently announced its Series D funding of $150 million. With this round, the company has more than doubled its valuation to $8 billion. Raghu, it's great to have you with us. Welcome to Trade Talks. And before we get into the latest round, let's learn more about Falcon X. Tell us about um, what the company does and how it's different from other crypto companies. Sure thing, and good to be back, Joe. Uh, Falcon X is a digital asset brokerage for institutions. For institutions, as a brokerage, we do trading, credit, and clearing. Essentially, anything an institution would need with a digital asset, we help serve that. And if you look at the profile of institutions we serve, we serve institutions all the way from some of the world's largest hedge funds, crypto native funds, retail aggregators, proprietary capital shops, uh, asset managers. So, so we have a diverse set of institutions. The reason why institutions come to us, uh, Joe, is a big differentiation is like the market neutral, market risk neutral approach that we take. We do not take directional bets as a company, especially in the last two months, given the volatility in crypto and the liquidity cascades, it became so much more important for your infrastructure provider to be market risk neutral because you want to make sure that the, uh, the provider uh, itself is not going out of business. So that is one big reason. The second thing is like the reliability of it. And the third thing is the regulatory ready side of Falcon X. We are the first and the only CFTC approved uh, swap dealer. And that is very important for a lot of traditional institutions coming into the space. How does your strategy insulate you from market pressures and weathering the current market conditions? Has that impacted you significantly? So the last two months have been an incredible stress test on the market, Jill. A lot of uh, crypto infrastructure providers um, like, you know, went through uh, turbulence, especially because of the liquidity cascades that are flowing through the system. Because we take a market risk neutral approach, what that means is we do not trade against the customer. So for every trade, we have hedging partners and liquidity providers who hedge the trades. So we ourselves are a technology platform that is not taking directional bets. As a result, you know, the infrastructure is reliable, it's stable, and the depth of liquidity is also very strong. So that became a very important attribute over the last you know, two months more so. And relative to that question, is it possible to turn a profit in current market conditions? So the fantastic news is irrespective of, uh, despite the very tough market conditions, Jill, uh, Q1, Falcon X is profitable. Q1, we had the largest number of customers on board and that story is bigger than Falcon X. Essentially in a time where everything about crypto is being questioned, we're still seeing a large number of institutions come in on board with Falcon X. And that's an indication that institutions over the mid to long term are still excited about digital assets beyond crypto. So we're somewhat in a down market in terms of trading activity and volume significantly than what we saw in 2021, for sure. How do you expect to fare? Do you think investors should be worried or is, is this just part of the, the growth cycle with such a young asset class? Yeah, I think uh, speaking with a lot of uh, institutions recently, Jill, definitely there is fear in the market. So one of the big things that we are noticing with institutional customers are most institutions are not taking directional bets, not just with crypto, but the broader market conditions, institutions are not able to predict where the market is going to go next. And that applies to crypto as well. As a result, we see institutions engage with a lot of market neutral strategies like the basis trade. So we're seeing a lot of activity on that, but institutions are not taking directional bets. Now, all the recent price movements that we are seeing in the market, Jill, we're largely seeing that from retail from Asia, which is uh, somewhat over the last week or so, it's uncorrelated with the, the US equities market. And we, we haven't seen this for a long time, but over the last two weeks, Asia retail is becoming uh, an important part. The second aspect of it is, Definitely crypto is becoming, uh, behaving like a risk on asset and specifically correlated to high growth uh, tech stocks. And that's what institutions are also noticing. Long story short, in summary, institutions are not taking directional bets, but they're engaging with market risk neutral strategies like the basis trade. And with all the recent events, which appear to be or could be systemic, um, we saw a number of liquidations over the past couple of months. What do you anticipate regulators will focus on first? Um, I think it's important to understand that the next five, 10 years of uh, crypto and digital assets more broadly, Jill, it's going to be regulation centric. So regulators are going to play an important role in this. 
Now, as we are looking at regulators and engaging with regulators and also speaking with institutions who are engaging with uh, regulators themselves, what we are hearing is like the first wave of action is going to be around stable coins. Regulators are going to be looking at stable coins very, very closely uh, towards that interagency effort that's happening within the administration right now. So stable coins first, then they want to define these assets better. Are they securities or the commodities? Once the definitions are established, the third phase is uh, assigning the right regulatory bodies for each of these uh, assets. So those are the three things that we are hearing uh, about regulators and the sequence in which with, uh, they'll engage with digital assets. Let's talk about the fundraise for a moment. Series D, 150 million, which is which is an impressive amount considering this market environment, how capital is pulled back a bit. What will you use the funds for and how does it help to bolster Falcon X's mission? Yeah, um, this is a very recent fundraise, Joe. And what that proves is like, you have some of the highest quality growth stage investors coming into crypto markets, despite all the volatility and the recent market events that we've seen. That actually shows the commitment towards the mid to long term of uh, crypto and more broadly digital assets as a whole. I think institutions are excited about digital asset transformation with crypto being the first use case. Now in terms of how we are planning to use the funds, we're going to be investing heavily in new products. That's number one. Number two, uh, M&A is a very important part of our strategy in the next 12 to 18 months. We believe that uh, there, there are going to be some great opportunities in terms of bringing companies into the fold and create value for those customers. So m and is going to be number two, and number three is uh, geographic expansion. Crypto has always been a global phenomenon. Institutions are also becoming much more global than they were two, three years back. So with that combination, geographic expansion is something that we're looking at. The m and part of your statement seems exciting to me. Do you expect to see more of that in the industry? I think so. I mean. Uh, like you know, when I look at the deals that are currently like you know going around in the industry, there is excitement for two reasons. The companies that are going to come out of this deal, both in traditional markets and crypto, are going to get much much stronger. We've seen this in dot com correction. So given that we've seen this cycle before, that companies are going to come much stronger out of it. The smaller companies are trying to get associated with those winners that are going to ride the market out. So the activity just started, but we think the activity is going to increase by two or three X in the next 12 months. All right, Raghu, appreciate the insight as always. Thanks for joining us on Trade Talks. I'm Jill Malantarino, Global Market Reporter at NASDAQ. Thank you, Jill.